There's only one nation, Raider Nation. You're listening to Silver and Black tonight on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. It's Friday night. That means it's time again, Raider Nation, for Silver and Black tonight here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Scott Colbranson, Maurice Moten back with you, and we got lots to talk about. We'll talk a little bit non-Raiders when we talk about the playoffs and wow what a weekend it was last weekend it took me two days to recover from Sunday night and what happened in that game with the Chiefs and the Bills one of the best I have ever seen but we're going to focus of course what we do every week here on the show and that is the Las Vegas Raiders so much going on we're going to devote a lot of time in this first segment to the eight eight (laughs) candidates for general manager are the Raiders doing due diligence or are they doing too much we'll talk about that in the second uh, segment after the first break we're going to get into the head coaching situation of course today earlier in Las Vegas maybe it's still going on as we speak whining and dining that is one Mr. Josh McDaniels the offensive coordinator of the New England Patriots is in Las Vegas. He is interviewing today for the Open Raiders position. We'll run through the official candidates and then some of the unofficial candidates as we move on in the show. Bringing in now my partner, Mr. Mo Moten. Mo, uh, it's one of those times where Raider fans are chomping at the bit. The news was a bit slow up until Thursday when we saw a slew of new general manager candidates. Of course, that's when the Josh McDaniel news broke about him on his official interview in Las Vegas today. Um, There's a lot going on here. I'm a little struck by how little there was going on and then how much it is at the last minute and by the sheer number of candidates they're interviewing for the general manager job. Yeah, this week you could call me Fireman Mo. Uh, (laughs) I had to get on Twitter and put out a couple of fires because people were freaking out when they heard Josh McDaniels is going to interview with the Raiders, there were conflicting reports. I think uh, Vic Taver of the Athletic basically said he's not the leader in the clubhouse. Uh, borderline kind of r- wrote him off, I would say, if you mm-hmm. read through the whole column, through the last paragraph. And then on Thursday, Ian Rapport comes out and says that Josh McDaniels is still a top candidate. And that I think that's where the uneasiness from Raider Nation came from. There were some people saying, well, I, I thought I didn't have to think about Josh McDaniels because he's basically not in the picture. Yeah. And then and then Rapport comes out and says, well, he's a top candidate. So when you, whenever you have conflicting reports, people just want to know what the truth is. Yeah. And before we get into, because we're going to go in depth uh, for the rest of this segment, really, on the general manager. We're going to start with that first. I know the head coach tends to jump out and people want to talk about that first. We're going to get to that. Um, but I would say that uh, that that'll be this whole first segment and then the coaching segment next time right after the break. But first, I want to touch on something Raider specific, sort of, because it kind of irked me, um, Mo. And that was Colin Cowherd on Wednesday had David Carr on his show. And of course, he asked David Carr about Derek Carr, and he asked him about the situation in Vegas around how Derek had asked for Bisaccia to remain coach and and some other stuff. I'm going to play the clip right now, and then when we get back, I want to comment on it. I want to get your your viewpoint. Here's David Carr talking about his brother Derek Carr and the Raiders in very interesting terms on Colin Coward. There is a sense as a veteran quarterback and and Derek, and and talking to him, man, he he went through an emotional roller coaster. They did – about as good as you can do this year with what they were given, and they made it work. There are they're not that far away. If you could add a couple pieces, we all know one of his best friends is Devonte Adams, and he possibly could not be franchise tagged, and we could see what happens there. But honestly, and this is not coming from Derek. This is coming from a NFL Network analyst, a guy that jumps on Colin's show and talks about football, talks about it with his friends. There has to be a commitment from the organization that they're going to give him what he needs to succeed. He only wants to win a Super Bowl. He's not here for the money. He's talked about hanging it up when John retired. And all of that stuff is, I want to win. That- all right, Mo, so here we are. And and here, I got to just get this off my chest, right? The car stuff with brother covering brother. Now, you and I, 
We've had many offline conversations about journalism and objective, being objective, objectiveness, and, and as a journalist. Uh, I understand. David Carr, that's his brother. That's his little brother. I get it. I mean, I, you know, I would do anything for my family, my brother, my sister, my kids, whoever. <laughs> and so I would defend them. But if I was in the business of covering them, uh, I've said publicly that, that, that I thought it was a bad look and that I thought it was unprofessional that he covers Derek Carr like he does. It's sort of like a judge recusing themselves if someone they know comes before them in court. I think that's what sports journalists would do too. If it's your brother, not a friend, but a brother, then I don't think you should go in depth and do all this stuff. But I think what bothered me more about this, Mo, and I know I'm reading into it, so if I'm wrong, you guys can argue with me and I'm totally open to that discussion – is that it seems as though David Carr, and Derek Carr does this a lot, is a surrogate for him. He said over, and I noted this, right? I watched it numerous times. He said, quote, it's not coming from Derek. This is not coming from Derek. Uh, I guarantee that Derek Zalasan, he hasn't said anything to me, but when we talked about it, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and really setting up the team that it's not in good shape and that his brother doesn't want to go through another rebuild. Now, it just seems as though that's not just a brother talking off the cuff without having talked to his brother, Derek. And so I'm a little put off by that because suddenly the campaign has begun and it never seems to be Derek Carr who jumps out. And why doesn't Derek Carr do an interview and say, hey, listen, yeah, you know what? I, I want to be a writer for the rest of my career like I said I wanted to be, but you know, I think we're close, so if the team was going to go a different direction, I would have to think hard about that. I mean, just be a man and say it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you there, but I will say this. Being that Derek's brother David is in the media, mm -hmm. that I, I, I feel like that's... They talk about it and say, look, I, I have my certain way of feeling. Derek says probably I have my certain way of feeling. You can share this about my feelings on the situation right? because I don't want to get out in front of the camera. And I don't want the blowback of what I might say, people twisting <laughs> things out of blowing things out of proportion. So with his brother being in the media and you kind of said it, it's kind of like that's Derek's mouthpiece. Now what confused me too was he did say, this is not coming from Derek, but as you said, when we talked about it, when we discussed yeah. things off the cuff, <laughs> so it's like, okay, is this coming from Derek or is it not? Yeah. And you have to believe that they're brothers. They talk about this all the time. It's of probably, course. It's of, probably of, coming from uh, Derek. And that's, that's the folly for me. Like if you just came out and said, look, we talked about it. Hopefully he doesn't get mad that I share this with you or because clearly to me, I think it's concocted. I really do. I don't think it's just David sharing what Derek said out of his own goodness of his own heart. I think Colin Coward, who's been very vocal in support of Derek Carr, which is totally fine. I got no problem with that. Um, and then suddenly David Carr's on the show and he's not asking David Carr about a lot of other things. He's asking about his brother. So that alone, it just kind of bothers me. The other thing though, that I have here, and I agree if I'm Derek Carr, man, I have been down this road way too many, way too many coaches, way too many dysfunctional situations. Although going into this season, he had, you know, the, the stuff with Gruden came out of nowhere. That was totally unexpected. It's not any fault of the team or the organization. OK, how would you have been able to vet that you couldn't? All right. Number two, something else he said. Um, he said, quote, has to be a commitment from the organization to give him what he needs. Now, going into this year, would you I would argue he had what he needed. Now, no one knew Henry Ruggs would make the poorest decision any human being can make with the accident that killed a young woman. But I find that a little hollow, too, because what is it you want? And then he said numerous times, it's not about the money. Let me tell you, when you say it's not about the money, it's about the money. I, and I understand Derek Carr's religious position, and I totally respect that you and I have talked about that off air, too. All right. But I will tell you this. The money does matter. Everybody who does a good work wants to be paid for it. OK, so don't say the money doesn't matter. Say, yes, I want to win above all else and I want to be paid and compensated for how well I do. But this whole idea, Mo, I agree with a little bit, but this, I mean, how much do you need and how often do you need it? Well, and what I think he means by that, and I talked about this with Phil Robinson of The Unfiltered Truth, mm -hmm. and he came up with this idea, and I totally agree. I think Derek is going to want a no trade clause mm -hmm. because think about it over the past few years he's been in the rumor mill about is he going to get traded is he going to be the star next season i think derek if he's going to come back assuming he does he's he's going to want that commitment so to speak that security not only 
that they're going to build a good team around him, that mm -hmm. we're committed to you, Derek, and we're not going to entertain any more offers from other, you know, other quarterbacks or go have a wandering eye. I think he wants to get past the point is it that, Oh, am I the, the am I the starting quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders? It's right. I'm the I'm the guy moving forward, no questions asked. We're moving forward. We're trying to win a Super Bowl. We're past the whole quarterback search, quarterback question mark thing. Yeah, I agree with you on that too. The and it's a good point. I had not thought about it until you mentioned it. But yeah, the no trade clause basically if I'm the quarterback, you're because if you're giving me a no trade clause, that means you've signed me to an extension, clearly. Even if it's a three or four year extension, if it's on the shorter side, three years, let's say, um, then I know that my career will most likely end there. And and if if I if if I want to leave, I can because I can approve a trade. But if I don't want to leave and I want to stick here, and it gives the ultimate commitment, and they it is because the no trade clause basically just ha it, it 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 hamstrings the organization to move a player should they want to. So I agree with you there. Again, I just don't like this whole surrogate thing. Um, yeah, agents do it more often. You're used to that. Every once in a while, teammates will do it. I, I've just found, and again, you know me, I've not been somebody who harps on Derek Carr at all. Uh, I just find this whole surrogate and this whole subversive thing that they do as a family is a little a little much. Uh, that's just all I'll say about it. But let's but let's examine Derek Carr's personality. Mm -hmm. When have you ever heard him get up to the podium and say anything negative or critical about the Raiders as a team or organization? He's True. not going to get out and say the things that David said. Yeah, David could get out and say that because he works for NFL Network. He has no connection to the Raiders other than that his brother plays for them. Right. But when you hear Carr get up to the podium, it's very Russell Wilson esque. Mm. Russell Wilson gets up to the podium and. Before this season, before last offseason, he was kind of like, go Hawks. Everything is go Hawks. He was never saying anything critical about the organization. He's all about the Seahawks. It's the same for Derek with the Raiders. He's not going to be critical. He's not going to say, well, I need this. I need that to come back. He's going to say, no, I'm a Raider for life. Yeah. No, and that's I... just how he's that's just how he's always been. I get it. Yeah, no, you're right. And and look, that's how they play it. Um, I, I prefer the opposite, but again, you can't go, I guess your personality is your personality. Yeah, and so yes. he's, he's doing it the way he wants to do it. So anyway, but that was, that was the, the David Carr stuff, which I thought was interesting, but I had, uh, uh, of course, NFL Maverick, on, AFL Maverick on Twitter had the one that I just laughed at, which is it's like Cuomo covering his brother on CNN, which is not a political statement. It's just funny because it's true. Again, I don't like family covering family. All right. So we're going to move on now. Mo. Let's talk GM candidates. All right. There's only eight of them. I mean, you know, they're, they're only only eight. eight. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and that's what that's where we'll start. Right. So, of course, official GM candidates, Trey Brown, who's a, a scout with the Cincinnati Bengals. Dewan Daniels from the Raiders, not a serious contender. Ed Dodds, of course, the Indianapolis Colts. Champ Kelly from Chicago. Dave Ziegler from New England. When we talked about that at the top of the show. Dwayne Joseph, of course, who is in house with the Raiders. John Spytek of the Buccaneers. Uh, Falcons national scout and the former tight end, uh, excuse me, Titans GM, Rustin uh, Webster. And Steelers pro, uh, Steelers pro scouting coordinator, Brandon Hunt. Whew. So. Mo, what do you make, before we get into the names, what do you make of so many candidates? Look, I understand doing due diligence, but it's sort of like, you know, when I've hired people in the corporate world, I'll get 25 resumes, I look through them, I, I, I pare it down to about three or four, and I talk to those people. Why do you think the organization, Mark Davis, eight people is a lot? Two of them are in-house, and I think those are courtesy. So let's say it's six. Still a lot for an NFL job. Yeah, I think part of it is maybe, I don't know this for sure because I'm not an inside source, but maybe Mark Davis has a lot of voices around him, to, you know, mm. saying, you know, this is what you need to look for. That's what you need to look for. He could have a pool of people just saying, look, we need to look for different things. And that's why they're casting a wide net. I, I doubt Mark Davis is making these decisions or calls in a vacuum by himself with Marcel Reese. Mm -hmm. I doubt that. So it, it, it could be a crew of people saying, look, this is what we need to um, follow or this is who we need to talk to. And that's why you see six to eight candidates outside or well, six candidates outside the organization and, and so many people coming in for interviews. But just just a quick highlight, the, the names that I, I would probably just circle in that list are probably Ed Dodds and Dave Ziegler right now among the candidates. I had a candidate list that come out that came out recently last week and. Rand, Rand Carthon was somebody I really thought that the Raiders yeah. should talk to, yeah. uh, part of the 49ers organization, and they they don't seem to have an interest in him right now. But um, some intriguing names on the list and some names that I just kind of look past as maybe 
uh, you know, outside long shot choice. Yeah. By the way, you're listening to Silver and Black tonight here. Scott Colbranson, Mo Moten. Make sure you follow Mo's writing. He is the national NFL writer for Bleacher Report. He's also covers the Raiders for Sports Not N A U T Sports Not Like Astronaut dot com. You can also find me there too, where I write about the Raiders. Uh, Mo, let's jump in. It's it's almost it's coming up on Valentine's Day. We'll get to your date plans later, but um, <laughs> when we look at Valentine's, the Ra- Raider Nation has already sent out the "Will you be my Valentine?" little hard candies and boxes of chocolate <laughs> to Ed Dodds. I've never seen. We did a we did a a, a poll up on Sided.co on the Sided app. <clears throat> Shout out to my man Scott Kaplan uh, and and. Ed Dodds dominates like it's like nine, nine out of 10 people want Ed Dodds as the, the, the operator, as the um, general manager of the Raiders. Talk about his appeal. I think I know mostly it's because he comes out of the Raider organization originally, but tell me why Raider fans are so in love with this guy and tell me why you think he might be a great choice. I think the other, other than him being an intern for the Raiders way back when, I mean, 2003 to 2005 or six, I think that Raiders fans look at the Colts and the way that team, that organization has built their roster, even though they've had some situations where their quarterback position isn't the best, Phillip Rivers, Carson Wentz, flawed quarterbacks, but they've been a playoff team. So when you look at that organization and how they built their rosters, you want some of that. You say, okay, they know how to build a roster. If we get somebody from their player personnel department. So I think that that's part of the appeal of it. And sometimes when you get on Twitter, sometimes it's, it's a lot of group think. So if a, if a group of people, if a small group of people, a knowledgeable group say, we like Ed Dodds, chances are everyone else will follow suit because <laughs> let's, be, let, let's be honest, a lot of people don't know a lot of these GM candidates. No, names. no. Like we don't talk GM candidates until it's time to hire a GM. So a lot right. of people don't are, are just falling on what other people know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I like him as the pick if it happens. Uh, mostly because he also has a very close relationship to a one Mr. James Harbaugh. And I think that, you know, if you look at this, and we'll talk about the next candidate in a second because there's another link there, but but with Ed Dodds and what he's done in Indianapolis, uh, the, the working for Al Davis when he was younger, the fact that he knows Jim Harbaugh, uh, I, I think he's that guy. Now, he's also pulled out of uh, jobs the last three years. He was interviewed. Um, he's been an up-and-comer, a guy that, that a lot of organizations want to hire. Uh, but I don't hold that against him. People are holding it against him. I say, hey, if I go interview for a job and I don't like it, I'm not going to take it, <laughs> right? If I'm confident in my abilities, I'm going to wait and do that. So the Ed Dodds situation uh, is a good one. We'll see where it pans out and pans out with the coach. Dave Ziegler now, on the other hand, too, has a relationship with Josh McDaniel. You'd be creating the New England Patriots West, basically. When you look at him, Mo, and what he's been able to do there, especially the last two years, talk a little bit about why he might be a good selection uh, to head out West and be the Las Vegas Raiders general manager. Well, if you're looking for a guy who's not afraid to spend money, <laughs> Dave Ziegler <laughs> is your guy. I tweeted about this um, Thursday, saying basically is reportedly is reported that he changed the Patriots' uh, approach to the offseason, where they spent money on Nelson Aguilar, Hunter Henry, Jonu Smith, Kendrick Bourne, brought in a bunch of guys. Now I know a lot of those, some of those guys did not pan out, as some people pointed out. But if you're looking for a GM who's not afraid to spend and take a chance to take a risk on a couple of uh, decent players, then, then Ziggler is your guy. But you also have to look at the draft. He found a, a pretty decent fourth rounder in Ramondre Stevenson, mm-hmm. who, who had a big role in the Patriots offense uh, as a fourth rounder out, out of Oklahoma, I believe. So, And then you have uh, Christian Barrymore, who a lot of people thought the Raiders would, would get because they need to revamp the defensive line. He started to come on at the end of the season. And of course, Mac Jones, who who's picked 15, I believe, in the middle of the round, first round in a lot of people like he has these physical, you know, restrictions, limitations. He's not as athletic as a Justin Fields. He doesn't have the arm strength. He doesn't have this or that. And the Patriots picked him and they made it work. So yeah, they did. If you look at the draft class and what they did with their offense, again, I know a lot of some of their free agent pickups didn't pan out, but this is a team that did go to the playoffs after a down season. So you have to give them some credit for that. You do. Speaking of credit, we're going to give our sponsors some credit. It's already up on the first uh, block, the first break, uh, and that was our discussion briefly about the eight candidates that are up for general manager of the Raiders. When we come back after this break, 
We're going to get into the coaching candidates, of course, which got bigger yesterday and is in action today out in Las Vegas. We'll talk about that here next on Silver and Black Tonight, only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. There's only one nation, Raider Nation. You're listening to Silver and Black Tonight on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Bet MGM welcomes you with a special offer on the NBA. Simply place a $10 money line wager on today's game. If either team hits a three pointer, you'll win $200 in free bets, regardless of your wager's outcome. Just use bonus code CHAMPION200 when you make your bet. Bet MGM is proud to be an authorized gaming partner of the NBA, and there's endless ways to make it rain with the king of sportsbooks. Download the app or go to betmgm.com and use bonus code CHAMPION200 to win $200 in free bets if a three-pointer is made in today's game. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Washington, D.C. and Virginia only. New customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Now back to Scott and Mo on Silver and Black tonight on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. 1090 ESPN Radio here in Southern California. He is one Mr. Maurice Moan. I am Scott Colbranson, and we are here to talk Raiders football with you. I hope you're having a great Friday night. Yes, the Raiders season is over, but we are all season long, all year long, I should say, here on Silver and Black Tonight. Make sure you check out our websites as well, silverandblacktonight.com. You can always get archived versions of the show there. You can also subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast feed, whether it's on Spotify, Apple, Google, uh, and not miss a week and listen to it over the weekend, so we appreciate that. Also, check out Mo's work up on Bleacher Report. He writes about the entire NFL up there, including fantasy football, you name it. He's on top of it, so check out BleacherReport.com. Also, Sports Knot, that's Sports N-A-U-T, SportsNot.com, where you can read Mo's uh, exclusive Raiders content there, as well as content that I do up on Sports Knot. So do that. I know that's a lot to keep track of. Also, follow us on Twitter, at SNB Tonight. That's letters S-N-B Tonight. He is at M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. That's Mo Moten, and I am at L-V Gully. All right, Mo, let's jump in now. Here's the thing. These coaching candidates, let's talk about a little bit. First of all, we we, we always try to bring the fans into this, right? We talk about Raider Nation. What an amazing group of fans, passionate, uh, love them, like a family, right? They they always talk about themselves being family. But what I don't understand, Mo, is the Josh McDaniels news breaks yesterday. Okay, Josh McDaniels. Remember Josh McDaniels? Yes, he had the stint in Denver. Didn't go so well. He's been with the New England Patriots. You know the New England Patriots, right? That six Super Bowls, I think it is. Yeah, uh, I think so. You know, double the number the Raiders have won. Yeah, uh, cheaters, whatever you want to, wh- whatever it doesn't matter. Okay, they've won six. They are a winning organization. I'm not a particularly big fan of the organization, but I respect them. Like I hate the Yankees, but I respect the fact that the Yankees have won what 28 World Championships. So you look at this. Can you understand that mindset? I I see it from both sides. On mm. one on one side, I. Look, the Patriots, as you said, have been winning. 
now there have been questions about how they've won. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of questions there. And I think that's what True. fans I think that's what fans are worried about. They don't want the stench of cheating mm. creeping into Raiders headquarters because that could mean punishment. And you know, a lot of fans feel like the league is already against the Raiders. So they don't want yeah. any more negative spotlight on the organization. So I get it from that side. Yeah. But but I will say, look, look at this, look at it this way. It, Josh McDaniels has done a good job with the Patriots as far as an offensive coordinator. I know he had Tom Brady, and Tom Brady is great, and he's a legend, a living legend. I get it. But look at what he did with Mac Jones this past year. As I said in the in the first segment, Mac Jones has some limitations. Arm strength, doesn't have the physical abilities of a Justin Fields. But got the job done, got the team to the place with a balanced offense. So he didn't necessarily have any stars there. I know Nelson Aguilar got signed there. Hunter Henry is, is decent when he's not on the injury report. Uh, John o. Smith, and eh, I didn't like the signing that much. Kendrick Bourne is a is a wide receiver three on or four on most teams, but again, that offense got the job done, got to the playoffs. They they were a very run heavy team, but he worked with what they had and got the team to the playoffs. Help got help get the team to the playoffs. So I I'm not a Josh McDaniels guy per se. He didn't make my top five head head coaching candidates list for the Raiders, but I would say he may be six or seven. I I I wouldn't hate the pickup, but I wouldn't love it either. Yeah. Uh, I understand. But, you know, remember Al Davis, remember the, 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 the saying he used to have, which was cheating was encouraged. <laughs> so, you know, and here's the thing with Josh, I, again, and I told you and our good friend, Evan Grote from the just pod baby podcast on Thursday that I was like, eh, I'm lukewarm to the Josh McDaniel. Yeah. He's a good coach. For me, it wouldn't be as exciting. I, 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 I think Harbaugh Harbaugh's won at the NFL level big yeah. time. And so to me, that's the big difference for this team. But, I look at that too, and I say, why not? Like the, the way that Raider Nation hates the Patriots, which I totally understand, and it's completely justified in my mind, um, yes. as as well as the officials uh, that were involved in that incident. Uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> but nonetheless, Josh McDaniel going to the Raiders would bring some of that additional hate and dislike with him, which is so Raider. So to me, it's almost like the bad boy organization. You know, Josh McDaniel, here comes the guy. Oh, he was he was, you know, Darth Vader's assistant out in, in New England, right? So he's the evil one, uh, spawn of Satan. That would not be a bad thing for the Raiders. So I don't think, you know, if if, if it's not Jim Harbaugh and it was Josh McDaniels, I would be fine with that. Uh, but there's other names too. And one of them really intrigued me. And I'm gonna start with that because Mo, you had a great piece up on sportsnot.com about the coaching candidates. Um and the one that I have uh, that I start with here is D'Amico Ryans. Okay. He is the, the defensive coordinator for the 49ers. So he has not been able to interview as far as we know yet, correct? Um, because he's planning for the NFC Championship game. But you look at Ryan and what he's, Ryan's, what he's done there. Uh, with the San Francisco 49ers, you have that disruptive four-man pass rush with seven players in pass coverage on big downs. The 49ers rank third best in the NFL in total defense. He is not only just a good defensive coach, but he is an aggressive, in-your-face defensive coach, which the Raiders have had not had in quite some time. Yeah, a lot of people are comparing him to Robert Sala and saying, well, Robert Sala d- d- didn't have you know, success in his first year with the Jets. And I will caution people, like, look at what Salah has in New York. He has a rookie quarterback. <laughs> yeah. He has a first-time offensive coordinator. So you cannot compare Salah going to the Jets and D'Amico Ryan's possibly taking the Raiders' job. If he if he takes the Raiders' job, most likely he's going to keep Derek Carr around. So already he's going to have a much better quarterback situation, a much better offense. So you cannot – don't compare the two. If you're saying Salah didn't work out with the Jets' first year, it's not going to work out with the Raiders immediately. So I would just throw that out. But you mentioned it. Uh, he knows how to coach a defense. I had my I had my concerns about is the 49ers defense going to be the same after Robert leaves? Mm. And it turns out they're just as good. Yeah. As you saw last week, they frustrated Aaron Rodgers. They get past the Packers to go to the NFC Championship game. So give him credit for that. A lot of people said even as a player, he was, you know, coming up, he was he was pretty much a leader on the field. Yeah. So that and I think that's important for the Raiders. And I wrote about this in my piece about even Gerard Mayo, who will talk about the Raiders really need a head coach who's going to be a leader in the locker room because they're, you know, gotten into a lot of trouble over the past few months off the field. So they're going to need somebody to come in that locker room. The players are going to respect and that who's going to demand respect from those players and keep those guys in line. No doubt about it. I just think, you know, <clears throat> and it, 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 unfortunately for him, unless the Raiders are, are just have such great feedback and are love them that the, the, the 
the coaching search might move too quickly for him. Now, if they were to lose Sunday to the Rams, maybe that changes a little bit, so he might have a situation. Now, a name that concerns me, uh, and I know Raider fans are not at all excited about it, is Todd Bowles. So Todd Bowles, uh, the 58-year-old uh, former head coach of the Jets, Again, the Jets' mess was not all his problem, but he certainly, especially that last year, had some issues. He served as the interim head coach for the Dolphins back in 2011 as well. His record as a head coach uh, between the Jaguars, Vikings, and, um, uh, excuse me, yeah, it was 26 and 41. So Todd Bowles is not one. We also know the miracle pass against the Jets, the Raiders, to win that game, which was improbable. Uh, with Henry Ruggs. And so all that stuff, Todd Bowles just is not someone who excites. And I wonder why he's in the pool. Uh, You know, some people, because you can't argue it's because of the Rooney rule. There's other African-American candidates. Um, I wonder what this is and what previous relationships are there that they've considered Todd Bowles. I don't think he would be a good fit for Las Vegas. I don't love the fit, but I'm, I'm willing to say that I think he can do better with a second opportunity because mm. you briefly mentioned it hit just to list off his quarterbacks with the jets. He had Ryan Fitzpatrick his first two years. And in that first year, he got the Jets to a 10 and six record. Mm-hmm. The jets haven't had a winning record since bulls tenure They have, they have, he, he gave them their only winning record since 2011. So just think about that. Mm. They had Josh McCown, who was, I believe 38 years old when he started. And then they had a rookie, Sam Darnold, who we still don't know if he's a starting caliber quarterback in the NFL. So didn't have again, he didn't have the greatest quarterback situation. If he go if he if he's hired for the Raiders, he's gonna have a better quarterback situation. I think he will have more success. My concern is, and this is my concern with any defensive former defensive coordinator, defensive assistant, who are you gonna hire as the offensive coordinator? Because at the end of the day, you have to score points. And that's my concern with Bowles is that he didn't have the greatest offensive staff mm. in New York. I believe he had Chan Gelly, he Oof. had Jeremy Bates, and he had uh, John Morton, who's actually the senior advisor, senior assistant under um, John Gruden. So mm-hmm. he has some familiarity with who the Raiders had, but I just worry about can he build a quality offensive staff? Because if he can't, he's only going to go but so far. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And, and, I know with, with D'Amico Ryans as well, yes, a defensive coach, but if you look at uh, his connections and who he's coached with, there's some good offensive folks there. And plus, uh, with San Francisco, I think yeah, you could joke about Jimmy Garoppolo and all that. But I, I would say with D'Amico Ryans, if he's able to bring Mike McDaniel, mm, yeah, exactly, <laughs> who's growing in popularity right now, yeah. I, I think he's probably a year or two away from becoming a head coach. But if he can bring Mike McDaniel as an offensive coordinator, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, no doubt about it. The other name, and you talked about him as well, is Jared Mayo. Talk about Jared Mayo, Gerard Mayo, excuse me. Uh, I think he's also a year or two away from becoming a head coach simply because in New England, I know he's called the de facto defensive coordinator, but... Mm-hmm. New England kind of split their play calling dudes on the defensive side. Of course, a, a lot of people want to say it's Bill Belichick's defense, but his son, Steve Belichick, also had a role in calling plays for that defense. So his role is kind of murky. So hit with his interview, my main thing would be like, what exactly was his role? Like how mm. much of the play calling was on him? How you know, how much of an influence did he have on the game planning week to week? So that would be my question with Draw Mayo. I don't think he's ready yet. Yeah, and I think some of these candidates, just like him, uh, and even D'Amico Ryans, which is, depending who gets the Raiders head coaching job, now these guys are coordinators, and yeah, they're interviewing for a head coaching job. That does not mean, to your point, like with Mayo, that they're ready for it, but you also get an opportunity to talk to young talent. A guy might be willing to make a move if he's close to a certain coach, whether it's a Harbaugh or McDaniels or whoever it may be, uh, a Todd Bowles. And so there's connections there that are very easy to find, but then there's also connections you might not know about. So I think the Raiders, in in talking to some of these guys, these are just up-and-coming coaches. And so you want to know, oh, by the way, uh, you look at at, at Ryan's, and, you know, he's in the NFC Championship game. Why wouldn't you want to kind of scout those teams, too? I think people forget that these coaching and general manager meetings, too, interviewing people that might be on the other side from you is also a smart thing. You understand their thinking uh, from a coaching perspective and then from a front office perspective, you get into these interview process and then suddenly this might be your foe on the other side. He might take a job with a different team or stay with the Colts. Remember like Ed Dodds, he, if he stays with the Colts, it's an AFC team. It's a team you need to be concerned about when it comes to the playoffs. So to me, it's a smart thing to talk to more of these guys so that you can get that background. 
But let's be honest, not to take anything from D'Amico Ryans. He's a great offense uh, defensive coordinator. And I think he'll be a decent head coach if he lands in the right spot. But mm -hmm. let's be honest, if you're breathing in the same air as, as a Kyle Shanahan or a Sean McVay, you're going to get some looks. Yeah. And I think that's part of it is that if you get, if you hire D'Amico Ryans, maybe he can poach one of those assistants on that staff and bring him with you. I just, I just mentioned Mike McDaniel when it comes to the Rams and Sean McVay, I, I believe Kevin O'Connell is, is a candidate out there mm -hmm. who's a quarterbacks mm -hmm. coach. He's getting looks. So it's a matter of who are you coaching next to and who do you have access to on your staff? Yeah, and, and that's what I was going to ask you, too, is you look at the, the, the current coaching search, okay? We saw the Bears job filled, um, and suddenly Vic Fangio was a candidate in Jacksonville, which surprised everybody, right? Denver's got their coach, so that's inside the division. But when you look at the situation with these co I mean, some of the names you and I talked about months ago, going back to, you know, even the John Gruden resignation and, and the weeks after that, Guys like your guy, Kellen Moore, some of these names were so hot, and then now these guys are not getting opportunities. Yeah, I think with Kellen Moore, what happened with him is how it ended in Dallas. Yeah. Not not a good look if you're looking for a coaching <laughs> job. And the way it ended in Dallas, their offense kind of sputtered. Amari Cooper is complaining about not getting catches. CeeDee Lamb kind of faded at the end of the year. So I think that's what hurt him and his candidacy. But I just wanted to circle back really quick with Josh McDaniels. And I, and I, this is my biggest caution with him because he's the biggest mm. name on this list right now outside of J Jim Harbaugh. Is you remember what he did with the Colts? He kind of backed out. Yep. And there, there's word that he has a kind of a quirky personality. So you want your players to buy in. We always talk about players have to buy into the system. They have to buy into the, to the scheme, whatever it is. Will he have a problem getting players to buy in with his personality? And I think that's a legitimate concern with Josh McDaniels. Yeah, I think so too. And and I wonder, Mo, you, you, you saw a lot of Raider fans on Thursday night after the news broke talking about this criticism, this this belief, if you will, amongst NFL fandom that Bill Belichick guys lose the locker room. That they, that that any of his tree guys who who coach under Belichick then try to go out on their own lose the locker room and maybe that's that quirkiness maybe it's the disciplinarian in him what do you say about that what's been your experience in covering the other teams uh, i would say that those concerns are are founded or justified mm -hmm. uh matt patricia I, I believe in his first or second year they were talking about he lost the locker room in yeah. his first or second year so that's an issue brian flores there's there's word coming out of miami that he you know he didn't play well with certain coaches, and that's why he went through coordinators. Didn't really uh, – his deteriorating relationship with Tua Tagovailoa and their GM, Chris Greer, so there's that. So I would say, yeah, when you're talking about Belichick guys maybe not galvanizing the locker room and their coaching staff, I would say fans – who talk about that have legit legit concerns but i will say this too that if you're winning none of that matters the pro the biggest mm -hmm. problem with a lot of these coaches is that they didn't have much success now brian flores got the dolphins to two back-to-back -back winning seasons but he didn't get to the playoffs so there's it's kind of hot and cold there but i i would consider brian brian flores a my third candidate as you know jim harbaugh won i i, I wish Drays would go harder at brian dayball but it looks like he's going to end up with the giants or the dolphins right now mm -hmm. but brian flores would probably be number three on my list yeah, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Brian Flores is a guy I like, too, and I think he'd be worth uh, worth the, the discussion there, and we'll see if that name pops out. And, of course, the Harbaugh thing. I mean, we spent our whole last show talking a lot about it. Um, still no no word. There's been no nothing. I mean, there's nothing about a Michigan extension. Uh, there was maybe earlier in the week a little bit about that, but that was it. And to me, you know, you might think that that means there's nothing going on. I think it's the opposite. I think, mm -hmm. I think the Raiders. It, we're waiting for this GM situation. You know, it, is it going to be Dobbs? Uh, is it going to be Ziegler? You know, who will it be? I mean, clearly, whoever the GM is will dictate strongly, especially because of relationships. Uh, not to say that if Ziegler was GM, that he might not talk to Harbaugh. I'm not saying that. But clearly the relationship and the New England relationship plays in there with McDaniels. There's a level of trust. And when you're a coach in the NFL, especially one now where you might not have the control that John Gruden had, but you want as strong an influence on your GM as possible to build the roster the way you want it. And so to me, the Harbaugh kind of lack of news is actually something I think Raider Nation should be encouraged about at this point. At least that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, I could see it in that way where if there's not a lot going on, then you think – there's 
dealings behind the scenes. <laughs> there's some negotiating. There's some neck ringing. You know, you're yeah. trying to work things out. But I, I haven't heard from our guy, Brandon. Brandon Brown, who we had on the show last week. So I got a little nervous because I'm not hearing any new updates about Harbaugh, but apparently like Michigan is trying to keep him around with a new deal. They got a mm -hmm. deal on the table and they're talking that out. But what I will say is if, if the Raiders do hire a GM first and it is Dave Ziegler, I would tell fans to prepare for Josh McDaniels yeah. because the obvious Patriot connection is there. Not to say, as you said, not to say he won't talk to any other head coaching candidates, but right. it's, it's likely that they're going to come as a combo. Uh, was he was Ziegler there when Flores was there? No, I want to I want to say I want to say yes. I don't oh. quote me on that, but I I think he was because um, Ziegler has been with the Raiders, uh, Raiders with the Patriots organization for for a while so yeah so he was there when flores left yeah yeah he I'm he might have been he might he was they might have inter intersected so if if he does get hired maybe they maybe we hear about more about flores who knows if he's not hired already well hold on to your hats i i have a feeling for some reason though i have a feeling this next week we're gonna get we're gonna get at least one of these positions and i think it'll be oh, the yeah. gm first and I think it'll come early after the week. It's the dead week between the championship games and the Super Bowl. So I would anticipate that. We got about a minute and a half, or actually a minute and ten left. Mo, want to get your thoughts on Sunday's games. You have the Bengals at the Chiefs. And, you know, I live in Cincinnati now, and, and the, the town is electric for the Bengals. I think the Chiefs are going to actually win this game pretty big. I would say pretty big. I had the Chiefs winning 35-31. Of course, I have, I have a column out today. If you guys want to place bets, if you want to bet against the spread or just pick a winner, that column's out there on Bleach Report. Just type it in. I probably tweeted it out, so it, it's out there for you. But I think the Chiefs win 35-31. I think you've got to put more respect on Joe Burrow's name. I think he's probably, along with Josh Allen, going to be the, the nemesis of Patrick Mahomes. Ah. See, I'm, gonna, I'm taking the Chiefs 31-20. Um, 49ers down in Los Angeles. We saw reports, record ticket sales, and they're all coming from Northern California. So the 49er fans are coming down. Which one? Who do you have in this game? Yeah, I think Sean McVay finally gets the gets the, Sean, the uh, Kyle Shanahan off his back. I, the 49ers have beat the Rams six straight times. I think finally Sean McVay gets it done. And, and I think OBJ, Von Miller, those midseason pickups have a big role in that one. There you go. You got it from Mo. I also like the Rams, too, uh, to roll in that game. All right, that's going to close it out for this week's edition of Silver and Black tonight. Mo, take care. We will talk next week, and I'm going to bet that we're going to be talking about a new GM. And probably Derek Carr after that, because that's going to be the next time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you guys all, Raider Nation, for being with us. Make sure you check us out, snbtonight.com. We'll talk to you next week only here on Silver and Black Tonight, Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Please catch Silver and Black tonight every Friday at 6 p.m. on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio.